First question is from I Love Dallas. Why should I do compound lifts when I can build a good-looking body with isolation movements? I wonder well, if that's Debbie. Yeah. Well, first, first of all, yeah. oh my God, that's that was a nice. throwback. Nice throwback. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Only if you're like uh, in the '80s or earlier, you'll get that. You one. need a VCR to, to pull it off. <laughs> yeah. but, um, so first of all, it's a, the question it assumes something that's false. Okay. So mm. can you develop a good-looking body with isolation movements better than doing nothing? But you definitely won't develop the full potential of your body without doing compound uh, lifts. Compound lifts are just far more effective at developing the body, building muscle, uh, building more functional strength. They burn more calories. They'll speed up the metabolism better. They're just far more effective. So whatever body you can develop with isolation movements only, number one, you would have got there way faster had you well, incorporated compound. And now number two, you ha you're not reaching your full potential. Yeah, I would say uh, um, you can dig a pool with a shovel or a tractor. It's up to you. Mm. I'm saying if you if you if you really want to use a shovel to do it, you absolutely could. Um, and I guess if that's the, the approach you'd rather have, but that's how big of a difference lifting those compound lifts will accelerate your results. Fat yeah. loss, building muscle, strength. So, but that being said, you could. I mean, I know I actually know a lot of a lot of guys that. Well, I mean, I competed with a lot of people that like did not train um, compound lifts, and they built some of the most competitive. Physiques. Wait, they did no compound lifts? Very little. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, bench for everybody bench presses, mm -hmm. right? But I mean, they're not they're not squatting, they're not deadlifting, they're not mm -hmm. overhead pressing. So mm -hmm. those th those three, which I think are three very important movements that you should be doing. Yeah. Um, they, most people bench press, but I mean, the overhead press, the deadlift, and the squat. Um, are were not in a lot of body. They weren't in my routine for a very long time. I was this guy. Yeah, but you mm. still did rows. You still did right. Yeah, yeah. I did some other. But I, when I think of someone saying this, I think of them. They're not doing the the big ones, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like they're not doing the big compound lifts that people because they're hard. They're yeah. hard to get good at, and that's so people uh, 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 avoid them. But that's what you, you got to understand is that what makes them so good and so valuable is the fact that they're hard. Mm -hmm. Is the fact that it it has. A long it has a long period before you get really good and mastered. If you if you do things and the body gets good at it and masters it really quick, the results slow down. You got to understand that. So you know how hard is it to teach somebody how to do a tricep push down or a bicep curl? It's not very hard, and because it's not very hard and it's easy to learn how to do that, the results are quick. You get some a little bit of results as soon as you start doing it, but then it falls off really fast because it's that easy to do it. It's the things that have. A, that are very challenging for you to learn how to do that provide all this all these results because it's a it's a long time for the body to adapt and get good at it. Yeah, this question just makes me cringe. Yeah, I know like, like right away. <laughs> Mainly because uh, just the overall function of your body. I mean, nobody. It, if, you, if this is your mentality, if you just want to pump and air up your muscles and look, you know, decent uh, in terms of like a balanced symmetrical physique, and that's your only goal in life, uh, you still have to recognize the fact of how your body is going to move and function and be able to operate long term. And there's going to be problems that, that occur from that when you segment your body into just single joint movements all the time. You're not going to have that communication uh, for your overall body like you would do these compound lifts where we have to organize uh, more muscle groups involved to really pull off uh, normal things in life, like heavy objects. You got to move and do things and rotation and, 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 you know, you're going to leave yourself susceptible uh, to more uh, uh, instances where an injury might occur. I wish I understood this when I was younger because I, I can understand where this person is coming from. I was definitely this. I mean, as a, even as a trainer, even having the knowledge of knowing that, oh, compound lifts are supposed to be better for me, yada, yada. I didn't care because I could build a physique. But now where I'm at in my life, boy, do I wish I would have pieced that together a lot earlier. I think I'd be further along. I would have had to put in half the work that I put in to get to where I'm at physique-wise. And, and I love that. I, I understand this now. Today as a father and being so busy with business and everything else, I, I don't have the same uh, – commitment to the gym as I did just five years ago competing when I'm in there seven days a week training hard for an hour, an hour and a half every single day. It just doesn't look like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get 30 minutes and sometimes that's only two or three times a week. And if I was doing isolation exercises, I would see like nothing. Like I literally, you, if you're only training a half hour, an hour, you know, and maybe on a good week, two or three hours in a week of training and you're doing bicep curls, tricep pushdowns and lateral raises and, and pec deck, 
you ain't seeing shit as far as results. But I tell you what, in that little bit of time, if all I'm doing is overhead pressing, squatting, deadlifting, rowing, bench pressing, just those those five major movements, if I'm doing just those things in that time, which you could do accomplish that in that few, little bit of time, I'm like maintaining a decent physique. Yeah, this you know what this reminds me of? Uh, it reminds me of those like kit cars that you could buy where you, you, you put like that car together. It looks like a Ferrari, <laughs> yeah. but it's got like a you know four-cylinder Honda engine in it. <laughs> it's all patched together. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense yeah. uh, to me because uh, yeah, I want to look good, but I also want to be able to move and be strong. And isolation movements just get crushed uh, when it comes to performance. But again, the results you're going to get are just gonna, you're going to get there faster and you're going to get further with the most effective exercises uh, mm -hmm. than you would if you did the exercises that are not as effective. And also, uh, it's really hard to make up for them. In other words, I can't think of six or maybe even eight isolation movements all done together with lots of sets and volume that would be equivalent to five sets of squats. You know, you could take a bunch of isolation exercises and put them together and say, I'm not squatting, but I'm doing all these isolation. I got one for quads. I got one from inner thighs, outer thighs, glutes, and hamstrings, and calves. Put them all together. Still not going to equal right. one exercise. That's how effective they are. So, you know, like Adam said, you can, you can do things the hard way or you can do things the easier way. It makes no sense to me why... Uh, somebody would want to go the long route and do it the, in a way that would result in less strength and, and mobility.